Okie dokie, this is Michelle Garcia, um, LakeCDARealEstate.com, and uh, this is the team, Dave, Jared, myself. Hi, everyone. So we're going to do a video here um, and just introduce the Coeur d'Alene area, the real estate market. We're going to talk about a, a handful of things, and this is mostly geared toward people who are looking uh, for information about our area and maybe you're thinking about moving here. Uh, so we just wanted to do, uh, we have these conversations all the time with people. They call and ask a lot of the questions that we're going to be talking about. So um, I just wanted to say hi. So Dave Davey, say hi. Hey. Hey. <laughs> and Jared Bond. Hello, folks. Uh, so we're going to just kind of start off with our area in general. And so I'm going to pull up the Google map um, and kind of go over um, generally when people hear about the Coeur d'Alene area, if you've never been here or maybe you came on vacation or something and you're still just not very familiar. Um, if you're looking at purchasing a home here, there's, there's some things that I feel like um, you know, you should know about and maybe it should be pointed out uh, when you're considering like what areas. So when you're just looking on a map, you know, you see these listings and you might see one over here on the west side of the lake. You might see one over here on the east side of the lake and it feels like they're very similar. Um, maybe the prices are similar, but it's, uh, it's a very different scenario when you um, look at the drive time, right? So what do, what do you think, guys? This area here, can you see my mouse? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this area here, because the 95, here's, here's downtown Coeur d'Alene. So when we talk about being close to town, we're talking about Coeur d'Alene, maybe Post Falls, you know, this kind of region in here, right? Um, and when we're talking about being out of town, there's not as many services, there's not, you know, gas stations, grocery stores, that sort of thing. Most of that you're going to find in this area. So uh, I would say what this is about 20 minutes or so out of town. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ish. Ish. And then over here, Jared, where's your place? Like uh, just a little further north. Further north, like up here. Right there, yep. Okay, let me. Just, and so, how how far does I mean, how long does it take you to get there? Uh, about thirty-five minutes. Thirty-five. Yeah. Okay. And then, so that's in this area. Yep. It, okay. And then uh, Harrison, there's a bunch of listings people will see online if you're looking in the Coeur d'Alene area. These Harrison listings will pop up, right? Mm -hmm. How long would you say it gets? It takes to get there. Say forty-five minutes. Forty-five to an hour, yeah. And that's with good weather, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And so you have a choice of taking this road that borders the lake, the ninety-seven. Yeah, oh. that is a two-lane road too, and it's very windy, so you're not going to make a lot of time traveling up ninety-seven. And so when you go down to Harrison, do you take the three? Uh, no, that's another two lane road also. It's a little straighter and you can go faster, but um, no, there's just no <laughs> easy way to get to Harrison. It's just, it's a long way either way you go. Yeah. And so if you're thinking, um, you know, these things are equal, they're just not, you know, 20 minutes versus let's say an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just different, especially if there's, you know, if you've got icy roads or whatever, you need to slow down. Um, and so maybe now it's, you know, an hour 20 or an hour 30. Sure. Well, that's a good comparison, though. If you went from Coeur d'Alene down to Rockford Bay, just on the west side of the lake, you know, that's more like 20 minutes, half an hour, mm -hmm. as opposed to directly across the lake where Harrison's at. That's, that is an hour. So it's a huge difference. Yeah, and there's, um, so when people want to be, quote, out of town, right, like they want to be on a little bit of acreage, um, this, 
this is a good option. It's not that this isn't a good option. It's just that you need to know, looking at a map, it's not like all things are equal on, on either side of the lake. So, so there's that. There's also some acreage property out here, uh, Wolf Lodge area. Um, and this is actually a pretty straight shot if they're not doing construction, right? <laughs> right. So, okay. I will and, say a lot of that stuff uh, out past Wolf Lodge though, there's quite a bit of an elevation gain, uh, which adds to time, you know, uh, switchbacks on the roads and oftentimes uh, being a little bit north of Wolf Lodge here, it could still take you a half an hour to get in town. Yeah, that's a good point. And so for anyone listening, Dave and my hubby go hunting and uh, well, Jared, you do too, not with them, but um, so this is good hunting ground in here, right? You guys want to talk about hunting real quick? Sure. Kind of depends. Yeah, I was, I was going to throw in real quick that, uh, you know, between all of us, um, all three of us have lived here for a long time. We're doing real estate in the area. Uh, we love to boat, hike, fish, hunt uh all of it so we actually have been to uh, every single place that we're talking about um and uh authoritatively uh understand the market you know um so yeah in regards to uh hunting you kicked that off jared well it's kind of it depends on what you're looking for if you're a deer hunter that's pretty easy they're all over the place elk that's a whole different beast and you need to be pretty studied up on that to take on that challenge unless you want to just take your rifle for a hike every day um, <laughs> That's uh, what I yeah um so i i don't know there there's so many areas around here you can you know right from Coeur d'Alene you can drive a half hour an hour and you can be in some great elk country uh, you can go set up an elk camp um deer hunting it it's very close, so um, I guess it would just be what you're what you're into. Um, yeah, and things like all over, right? Um, yeah, so the, any direction, north, south, east, west, it's all over the place. It just depends on on what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. And I and I, I um, went zoomed out so we could just show the proximity to Canada, um, and let's see to um to show where idaho starts in montana right so here's the canadian border we're about what 90 miles or so from coeur d'alene to the canadian border maybe 100 yeah, about a, about 100 yeah i'm hunting uh, elk in port hill way up north there this year port and when you leave port hill about seven miles you see the first sign and it says coeur d'alene 93 miles oh okay well there you go so we're about 100 miles to the Canadian border to the north, and then we're considered the Panhandle area, right, North Idaho. Um, and so here you have Montana, and then of course here is Washington, and Coeur d'Alene is about uh, 35 minutes or so to the uh, Spokane Airport. Mm -hmm. So just for reference. Okay, cool. And what about... Um, I don't know, other outdoor activities like fishing? Yeah, one thing I would share is that uh, I, uh, I used to live in Pulse Falls. Uh, I worked in Coeur d'Alene. I rode my mountain bike every day from Pulse Falls to Coeur d'Alene. Uh, when I got in top shape, it was about a 25 minute ride. Um, and when I was taking that ride, the entire time I was on a dedicated trail that's been developed all along the lake there for anybody to walk their strollers, ride their bikes, take their dog or whatever. And there's trails like this everywhere. I mean, there's one that goes up I-95. I think it's gonna go all the way up to, uh, I mean, it might end up going all the way up to Sandpoint by the time they're done. I mean, they're just trying to make that thing go forever. So, you know, as a biker, you know, that, that's great. Um, also, when I was working in Post Falls, every Wednesday I'd get together with a group of guys and we'd go to a place called Canfield Mountain. Um, and we'd go up there riding and it's epic I mean, i'm talking professional riders it's just amazing and as you see all the green you know that's all the forest and 
all this stuff you want to do outdoors is right next to town. It's awesome. Yeah, that's a good point. And the trail, there's one of the main trails um, is the Centennial Trail, and that runs from, well, it goes into Washington, but in Idaho, it runs from the state line um, all the way kind of through this area, kind of borders the river, right, Dave? Yeah. And then goes down through Coeur d'Alene, the city, and then uh, kind of ends up at um, Higgins Point, which is, mm -hmm. you go down here, and you end up right around in this area, and it's just beautiful. And I will tell you also, um, so this area down here, Higgins Point, I wonder if I can just Google that, um, is where the photographers bring their, you know, five foot long lenses and they all go down there and park out by the, um, by the lake and they take pictures of all the eagles when they come in the winter, uh, in the winter months. And I mean, it is spectacular to go do that. Um, I, oftentimes I'll bring people uh, when they come into town, if they're if they're here during the winter months, like November, right, is about when they come. I think the eagles. Yeah. And, the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so it's um, it's just epic. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so you see a lot of wildlife for sure, and you see wildlife in town. I live right in Coeur Lane, and there was two deer. I had to drive real slow and get out of my way to get into my house last night. Uh, right downtown in Coeur d'Alene, they just built a $17 million park about five years ago, and they've got eagle watching. They got towers there for eagles to land on right in the middle of the park, right next to the Coeur d'Alene Resort. Yeah, so that is a good point. So let's Google that. I think it's McEwen Park. Mm -hmm. And so we'll just show some pictures of some of these things. Oh, I typed that wrong. That's okay. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. McEwen Park. So this area, when we talk about downtown, I always mention this to people. If you're from California, you'll understand what I'm saying um, about the Bay Area. So when we moved from Southern California to Northern California, people would refer to, we lived in Vacaville and Fairfield area, which is a little bit north of San Francisco and Oakland and all of that. Um, when people, we would talk to people and they'd say, oh, we're gonna go to the city. And I'm like, well, what city? Oh, we're just going to the city. <laughs> and so, and it took me a little bit to figure out, oh, they're, just, they're talking about San Francisco. So um, it's just so big, you don't even have to say San Francisco. People know what you're talking about when you go to the city. I feel like this is a little bit similar when people talk about going downtown. I mean, I, I refer to downtown all the time and it's not downtown Post Falls. They're, they don't really have a downtown. It's not downtown right. and it's not anywhere else. It's just downtown Coeur d'Alene. And yeah. so this is kind of the hub, right? Like um, absolutely down, down here in downtown Coeur d'Alene, here's an aerial shot. Um, so you have Tubbs Hill, You've got the resort here. You've got the downtown area. This is Sherman Avenue, which kind of functions as our main street. And um, McEwen Park is this whole section in here. And I mean, it's just awesome, right? Like you talk about McEwen Park or downtown or whatever you guys want to point out about this area. Well, I'd say that right next to that, there's a, a thing called Tubbs Hill. Uh, it's actually connected to the park right by the water that you can, you know, take hikes of uh, any adventure level. Um, you cliff jump into the water. I mean, uh, just lots of stuff to do all around there. And it's all outdoors. Beautiful beaches. Um, you can rent any type of water, anything you would want. Um, take a seaplane, I mean, uh, parasail, I mean, it's just uh, anything you'd ever do on water, you do right there. Yeah, McEwen Park also hosts in the summertime every Wednesday night, it's live after five, so they have a lot of local bands and some bands from all over the place, and yeah, it's a good time, a lot of vendors, a lot of uh, craft beer vendors, food, all right there in the park, um, bring your kids, lots of activities for the kids, um, 
that's a pretty good family scene downtown in the park. Yeah, that is a good destination day to be downtown in the summer. Uh, they couple that with the farmer's market and, yeah. you know, lots of other things that are going on down there too. And it's, uh, it's bustling. I mean, if you, if you're down there, there's a lot more people walking around than there are people in cars driving around for sure. Absolutely. It's packed. Yep. Well, here's Tubbs Hill that they're talking about. Here's, this is the resort area. That's the boardwalk going around the resort. Um, there's a library. I mean, that was a big thing when we had kids. Uh, I mean, when we first moved here, our kids were young. And so we were at that library, which is award winning. I mean, it's, it's an awesome library. You've got fireplaces and lounge chairs and two stories. And there's an awesome little kind of kids section um, that is, there's just so many activities going on. I don't know about right now, this minute with COVID and things, um, which I guess we can talk about that for a minute, but let, let's just finish up with the downtown area. Um, City Beach. And so as far as real estate goes, and we'll touch on some, some key neighborhoods in this region, not just Coeur d'Alene, but some other areas too. But while, I'm, while I've got this all zoomed in, this uh, is the Coeur d'Alene Resort Golf Course. And so this is that Sherman Avenue, which I mentioned is kind of like our main street. Um, this whole area downtown Coeur d'Alene is, I mean, just thriving as far as the real estate market goes. But this south of Sherman, is um, really a sweet spot because these are kind of a little more off the beaten path. You, like sometimes Sherman Avenue, you'll have the parades and you know, it's exciting, but sometimes people don't want all that traffic right in front of their house. Um, this, these areas uh, are a little more uh, remote, but still you can walk to everything. Any, any mm -hmm. one of these places you can, just walk out your door and, you know, go have coffee, um, mm. overlooking McEwen Park, or go to an awesome restaurant. There's a bunch of restaurants down here. Uh, it's just a really neat area to, to hang out. Yeah, you know, the Sanders Beach area is great. And, and what I see a lot in the summertime, people riding their bikes downtown. A couple ride their bike downtown, enjoy some coffee, dinner, what have you. Um, I see that happening all the time. All the time. I know someone who bought a house down here so that he could go downtown, get drunk every weekend, <laughs> stumble home. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, it's, I'm being funny, but um, it's just, a, it's such a different lifestyle when you can you don't have to get in your car. You can walk mm -hmm. to everything that you would ever want to do um, because you can also walk to all of this, you know, lake stuff too, right? You can go mm -hmm. hike to the hill, all the stuff that Dave mentioned. And then you have the city beach down here, which, um, so if you ever come to a fireworks show for the 4th of July, this is where all the action is, you know, that's where the fireworks go happen. Uh, maybe you want to take some classes at North Idaho College. There's their beach. Um, I mean, basically that college is almost practically on the water. And yeah. um, they've got volleyball courts over there. It's just a really fun time. So, okay. Um, what else? What else did we say we were going to talk about? Let's see look at my notes here. Oh, let's talk about, go ahead. I was going to say, since we're on the topic of kind of walkability factor, right? If we go up to where the Atlas Mill project is going to be and all that stuff that's, you know, currently existing, that's been developing for the last 15 years, uh, you know, that's also another great place to, you know, be able to, you know, live and work and just stay where you are if you want. Um, Cause you can walk out your place or take a, bike and get to a movie or get to a store or a restaurant or ice cream place or anything just like just like downtown the only difference is you're on the lake you know instead of the water or instead of I mean, you're on the river instead of the lake but um also another great area for people that you know want to be close to everything that's a very good point so i'll go back to the map and then i'm going to pull up some pictures of riverstone okay. uh, so we've got i'll zoom back out here just for context so we've got downtown coeur here that we just talked a lot about. 
And then this is all Lake Coeur d'Alene, right? This is Higgins Point where, you know, I was mentioning about the eagles and all of that, a little more rustic and remote. Um, and then once you, once you get here, this is kind of where it changes into the river, right? And that river goes all the way into Washington. Um, and so this whole thing, uh, we'll talk about Riverstone in a minute, but I do just want to point out um, the difference as far as real estate's concerned um, of this river is kind of significant. You've got everything on the north side is mostly in the city limits where you have city services, um, you know, you're right here by the highway, easy to get to. The stuff on the south side is not city. And so these, a lot of these properties will have, you might have a community water system or uh, whatever, but most of them uh, are gonna have, you know, either a septic, yeah, septic and a well, um, or, you know, you'll, it's just handled differently. And the parcels are going to be generally um, larger than in the city limits area. And then you have some kind of unique properties like where's Harbor Island? You have Harbor Island, which is a cool little community. Is that right here, Jared? Yep. That one? Okay. Um, where you have a whole cluster of homes um, just on that little section of land, but it's kind of a little community. Whereas the ones that are like, say on the water here, they're a little more separated. So you just have your, your property and you're not in a neighborhood. So those are just things to consider. Another good thing to point out about being on the north side of the river in the city or the south side in the county is your tax. The taxes are, are a lot more in the city on the north side than they are on the south. A lot different. Yeah, a lot different. And this is more wooded and trees and you know this you're like literally in a little city. Mm -hmm. Okay so let's talk about Riverstone see if what these pictures look like if it tells the story. Yeah it tells the story. So who wants to talk about Riverstone? Um. I mean, just give an overview of how you describe. Lots of coffee shops, restaurants, uh, boutiques, boutiques, whatever you, whatever that is. Um, a few outdoor shops. Um, the the cinema. Uh, what, what is it? Regal Cinema is there. Um, yeah, just a cute little. I guess you would call community. Mm -hmm. Um, and a couple of things, the, the, uh, the bike path that I referenced that I rode from Pulse Falls, it goes through there and then ends up going a little bit further around the lake, like Michelle said. But um, in this particular area, uh, in Riverstone, some of the nicest restaurants we have in the area happen to be in Riverstone. Um, and Anthony. it's a great area to just go and, and hang out. There's a huge fountain. You can walk down to the river. You can take that big path. You can, you know, uh, just a great place to hang out in the summer. Um, yeah, whether you or not, you know. Yeah. Nice condos there. Um, yeah. yeah. Lots to offer in the Riverstone area. Yeah. So one of the, as far as real estate goes, so um, you've got kind of a whole mix. You've got single family, well, you've got condos above the commercial, and not all of them are above commercial, but um, but most of them. So uh, that's not for everybody, right? Uh, you know, you're going to have, it, it's a vibrant, active, you know, community. Um, and then let me go back to, oh, this is, that's a good shot. I want, I want to go to the map in a minute, but I just want to show you. So there's an outdoor area. It um, overlooks this man-made lake. There's a lot of events that are held there and also um, concerts and things. So, you know, if you've got a home in this area and you don't like the idea of concerts every week, like probably that's not a good area for you. However, um, these condos, uh, can be vacation rentals 
and um, the HOAs do allow that. And a lot of the single family homes in the area, so here's one. Here's a typical single family home um, from a certain builder, Active West. They have built quite a few homes in this area and they've got a bunch of different developments going on. And so let me go back to the map now that we have that context. Um, and kind of zoom in on the Riverstone area. So Le Peep is a popular restaurant. It's right on the water and everything in the Riverstone area, you can either walk or bike to Le Peep or you know any of these uh, restaurants like Dave mentioned. You've got uh, you've got um, I just zoom in a little more. Okay. You've got like Anthony's, you've got Bardenay, you've got distilleries and everything. Yeah. And so as far as the real estate goes, let's zoom in on that and just show you the different types of homes that you'll find in this area. Did I go too far? Cougar Gulch. Yeah, that's south. Okay, so here's the river. And then when we're done talking about Riverstone, we'll talk about the Atlas Mill site that Dave mentioned. Okay, so you have a lot of, um, you have a lot of activity in this, am I too far south? Or go west a little bit. Oh, there it is. Okay. So um, you have that lake area. This is kind of a man-made lake. And then the Centennial Trail goes all along here. Um, and you've got a lot of homes. Here's Felton. That's a tiny little street in the Riverstone area that they just built all these homes in the last, what, Jared, like year or two? Year or two, yeah, year and a half, yeah. Yeah, they're super nice too. And then these are, the stuff on the water obviously is gonna be a little more, a lot more expensive, right? You've got a whole development of um, kind of newer, more modern looking homes along this area, Bellerive. Um, and this stuff on the water, I mean, you know, these are all million dollar homes and then a, the same type of home across the street might be not quite half, but you know, maybe two thirds the price um, of the of this stuff comparing it to on the water. And these are larger. Um, and then you've got some that Active West builder that I mentioned, he's doing quite a few and his niche is um, kind of smaller lots uh, and still that more modern look. And so he's got some stuff going on in here. Uh, lots of new construction going on in this whole area. And again, you just, you, it's lock and leave. So you can, uh, it could be a second home for you and you don't have to worry about uh, you know, snow removal and all that stuff. Uh, I was going to mention too, in regards uh, to this particular area, you really want to work with a real estate agent because as you can see, there's only two things that are on the market at all right now. Uh, they have a tendency to go fast, but, you know, since we're in the market every single day, we're aware of, you know, things that are coming soon and the developments that are going on. Michelle's going to talk about Atlas Mill here in a second and some other stuff like that. So, you know, having that inside scoop really does help because everyone that already lives here, they all want to be down there too. And they know people and they can get some of the inside scoop. So, it's helpful to have representation. Yeah, that's a good point. So, this is a very typical house. This one's listed. Um, as you can see, it says active, but that A, that yellow A means it's pending. So, this one already has a contract on it. They just haven't released their contingencies yet. But I just wanted to um, bump into, you know, a typical house here in 
that Riverstone area. This is new construction. Um, they have some common areas and that's what this whole section is all about is, um, you know, the lots are going to be pretty small. So let's see, this lot, some of my stuff is covering up, look, 0.08 of an acre. <laughs> it's tiny. Uh, but the yeah, house it was designed that way intentionally, you know, for, I mean, it's move-in ready. Um, there's nothing you're going to have to do to the landscaping. I mean, if you want to move into uh, a giant condo, there you go. I mean, that's pretty much what we've got going on there. And actually, that's a good point because um, the, so it's, it's low maintenance, but totally. um, you, but it is a single family home. It's not an attached mm -hmm. condo. And that brings up the, um, the HOA fees on these are more in line with like a single family home, which in our area. So coming from California, some of these numbers sound ridiculously low, but in, this home, I think the HOA is like 75 bucks a month, or it might be 85 now. But um, those condos over in Riverstone, these here, these condos, um, those range, and there is a range, uh, but I think they start at 350 and they go up to, what do you guys know? I think 500-ish, 499 or something. Something like that. Lines. And that's monthly, right? So it, it is a big difference. Um, both of them at this moment in time can have short-term rentals. Sometimes people will buy these properties for themselves, but they use them uh, as an income producer as well. I know one guy, he bought, um, he bought over here and he rents it out in all of the summer months, our, our high season for vacation rentals is uh, what, like June through October? September. Not even October, like September. September, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he moves out for three or four months and then that pays for his place for the whole year. Um, and yeah. not everyone is willing to do that, but you know, there's just a lot of different options when you can do a vacation rental. Um, so, and for resale, even if you're not planning on doing a vacation rental yourself, if you ever think you might sell, the future person, that's an option for them, right? So, yeah, um, the values, you know, that just keeps the value strong. One thing I thought I'd mention too is uh, I, I haven't talked to anybody that was moving into the area that wasn't shocked at how low our property taxes are. Yes, good point. It's never happened. They're like, what? It's only that much? I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, wow. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm in a new construction home north of the stuff that we're looking at, but we're still in town. And we pay uh, 2,800 or so, 3,000. And that seems kind of high to me, but the majority um, I don't know what you guys pay, Jared, but you know, I, I see it's pretty common for a subdivision house in town to be somewhere, what, like 2000. Mm -hmm. That's not uncommon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about Atlas mill site. So I'm going to go to the satellite view. I think I'm going to go to the satellite view there. Okay, so we just got done talking about Riverstone, right? Um, this is a big deal here right now. So Mill River is another area of town that's all developed. Uh, so Riverstone is more the commercial mixed with residential, um, hustle and bustle, you know, lots of stuff going on, walking paths. Uh, Mill River is a little more off the beaten path, but you have a similar offering where you've got single family homes, condos, um, you've got the million dollar homes on the lake, I mean on the river. Um, and so let me just pull up. I wonder if there's anything listed over there right now. But um, in between those two areas is this big parcel of dirt. It's like what Jared 40 or 50 acres 
Yeah, it's uh, maybe even bigger than that. So I'm going to pull up Mill River just to show some sample properties. Um, that's not a good sample. Uh, well, here's a condo just to show what they look like. So let's see, this one's 450. You've got a three bedroom, two and a half bath, um, 2,000 square feet. And I think the HOA is over here, like 350? 300. 300 monthly, there you go. So, and then same thing, you've got single family homes. Um, you know, you've got to take care of the yard, but uh, anyway, that's, oh, I was gonna show some pictures of what the condo development looks like. So this is Mill River. It's nice. Um, these were built, I think in the early 2000s. So some of them need some updating. But, um, but that's Mill River. And so then you have all this stuff in between that's just dirt right now, but they're developing it. So uh, Jared and I have, I actually did some videos um, and they're on the YouTube channel. There's a playlist of just the Atlas Mill site. So what's going in here, uh, is a whole, I mean, a whole host of things. There's gonna be, the walking paths are gonna connect the two areas. Um, you're gonna have, there's a dog park that is right on the water that's planned. Um, I don't think I have that pulled up, our Atlas Mill site page. Um, they're gonna have uh, picnic yeah, areas picnic and they're gonna have uh, barbecue spots. Um, they're building something pretty unique in that there's a uh, handicap access to the lake where you can take your wheelchair and roll right down into the water, which is pretty unique. Yes. Uh, not a lot of places you can do that. It's, they really thought it out well, um, complete with trying to keep the North Idaho feel in that if you're driving down the main through fair there trying to get to Coeur Lane, you know, they, they crafted areas throughout that whole thing where you can see all the way to the water. So you're not, I mean, they're really trying to preserve the view of the lake and everything incorporated with that, which took them a lot of time and a lot of bargaining to get to where they're at. But there isn't any single person that isn't overly impressed with this particular project and they're under budget and ahead of schedule. So, um, this is the park area and this this is the proposed and you know this rendering might be a little bit out of date i don't know if they've made significant changes to that or not the listing that i pulled up um is over at riverstone uh that modern single single family home that's in this area and so this is all developed this area is the proposed Atlas waterfront project, I think is what they're referring to it. Um, and there, there will be some commercial mixed in with residential. Um, I happen to have a client who's already kind of put his hat in the ring for one of these um, homes. And these are gonna range in the, around just under a million um, for kind of a modern style uh, they're calling it Mountain Modern. And I don't know that the whole development is going to have this feel. This developer um, has that type of product and he'll stay true to that style um, of Mountain Modern. Um, but, you know, you're going to have, uh, I think, I think this area in here is all residential as well. But there will definitely be a mix of townhome, single family and condos. <laughs> And then you have all of this is common area. So none of these homes, while they, they might have a view of the water, they won't be on the water. Uh, so this will be public access, you know, whether it's a walking trail or dog park, or as Dave mentioned, the ADA, um, uh, you know, water. There's, there's actually two paths that go there, one for walking and one for biking. Um, right. And then, the center there in the park, there's also an area for four food trucks. So you'll be able to go down there and get something to eat 
Um, yeah. And then like Michelle said, mix you. So there will be some commercial um, throughout there. Um, and then a, a nice parking lot. And then the boat launch, what did they say about the boat? There'll be uh, how many docks so people can pull their boat up, so this park is their boat, and go have a bite to eat or do some shopping? Yeah. yeah. My understanding is no one's committing to the marina yet. Um, I think they want to get some of this infrastructure done. And, but, and so this is a, a question mark that I think a lot of people want some kind of day docks. Um, mm -hmm to you know be able to pull up but right now as it stands it hasn't been approved unless dave do you know since you're at all the city meetings all the time do you know have you heard anything about that no as a matter of fact the last i heard is it's still up in the air and actually what the guy that's running the project alluded to on the last city council meeting i went to um he's like yeah so we're under budget and we want to keep it that way and once we're done with this then we're going to make you guys do that too so yeah. so it seems like it's going to happen probably but so. no one's like it's not official and they're not committing to it so right. anyway this is um and i'll be doing regular updates on what's happening with this waterfront project but here's some photos of what it looked like what Jared a few I think this was my first yeah time. yep that was probably what mm, Mar uh, April May but um, I have some new videos we just got them up on the on the YouTube page but I haven't loaded them onto the website yet um, so that'll that'll be there but I think you could go to YouTube and just go to Lake CDA real estate and find those all right well um, Man, we're like way far into our talk. Um, what haven't we, we haven't even talked about the outlying areas, so. Well, maybe we should just talk a little bit more about this area, you know, and then, uh, you know, wrap it up and then just, you know, do another one for each area. Yeah, we can do that. Um, there was, so there was a couple of topics I wanted to, I think we hit on most of them, but, um, one thing, let me go back to map view, to consider is healthcare. If, um, if healthcare, you know, being close to hospitals and doctors and everything is super important to you, um, that is going to mostly be in this section here. So you've, well, Hayden too. But, um, so when we talk about being close to town, that's, you know, definitely one of the considerations if you have regular doctor appointments um, that you'll want to think about. The other thing is um, access during winter months. Okay, all right. I'm just going to tell you, I'm a baby when it comes to driving in the snow. And <laughs> Jared knows this. He's taken me off road in his Jeep. And, uh, and Dave knows too from my husband, you know, who complains about what a baby I am. So, I don't really like to uh, drive on the icy roads and we are four seasons. So I, you know, just want to put that out there. But, you know, these guys, if you ask them what's a bad winter, Dave and I just talked about this. So I think <laughs> in the last 15 years or so, we've, we've been here 16 years. I said there was like, I don't know, four or five bad winters. And he's like, no. <laughs> so to me, it's a little different, but um right. Well, one of the things I'll say is I was born and raised in Spokane, <clears throat> so I'm 51, right? There's been, uh, I would say, five, six, six bad winters that I recall. Um, and, and then, you know, there's just more snow than every other year. On a, we get like 30 inches of precipitation a year, right? And that's rain and snow. Um, that's not a ton if you look at national averages and everything. Um, we have enough to make it really green and pretty here, but it's not the Olympic Peninsula. It's not, you know, we don't get that kind of precipitation, right? Um, so I think uh, it's always navigable. Um, one of the differences I remember growing up in Spokane when I still go over there in the winter, uh, in Idaho, we have an amazing snow removal system. Um, in, in Idaho, they care about commerce. They care about getting people on the road so they can go to the businesses so that we can all do what we do every day and when you get in Spokane you don't feel that I mean they're a major thoroughfare that goes north to south 
in the middle of a bad winter. It's three lanes each way, but now it's not because they'll take up each lane and fill it full of snow. And now it's a one lane road, which means it takes you forever and you can't even pull into the businesses. Like it's ridiculous. But over here, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they do have a lot of infrastructure to, um, or facilities to handle the snow and it's often too. So one of the things, I guess, uh, this comes up sometimes when you're looking at a property, maybe you're out by the lake, like let's say you're looking at something over in here, Kid Island Bay is I think in here somewhere. Yeah, right in here. Um, that's a popular area for some residential. Um, and um, if you're on a bus route, those get plowed first is my understanding. And so mm -hmm. that's helpful to know. If, if you are thinking about going out of town, if you're um, on a bus route, you know, that'll make it a little easier. Um, what else regarding, oh, touch on, Dave, you wanna talk about schools for a minute and then we can wrap it up? Um, yeah, just that there's every option you would want. I mean, I, I sent my kids to a private school. Um, then I was it, was, it was before I was in real estate. I uh, had a downturn, couldn't afford to send them to a private school anymore, and there was a ton of other options. We've got great charter schools. Um, the public school districts uh, have good rankings. Uh, and so there's just tons of options for whatever you want to do. And then um, I will say, so this is the our relocation guide. There's a list. Let me just scroll down all the way to the bottom. Um, there's a list of school uh, and everything else in here, too. I mean, but here's all the phone numbers and then, um, you know, and it's sorted by charter school versus public school and also the colleges, I think I listed those in there as well. Um, so this is the, our relocation guide. You can get this exact copy digitally online from the website, lakecdarealestate.com. Oh, there's the colleges. Um, and, or, if you get in touch with one of us, we can mail one to you, or you know, if you're in town, we'll just hand you one. Um, but yeah, I have a hard copy too. So these are handy for uh, you know just everything from the courthouses. The you can see all the medical, health. Um, there's phone numbers. Every single oh, here's the builders. Every single um, thing in here in this guide is also on the website. So if you go to the website and click uh, resources, where is it? Local resource list, go there. And everything you see on the guide will be, um, most of them, if they do have a website, there's a clickable link that um, will get you, you know, what you need. So all of those blue Things are clickable links that should be handy for you if you've got questions for the schools or whatever. So there's that. Um, I think that's it. I mean, that's a lot. And there's a whole s bunch of stuff we didn't even cover. We didn't talk at all about Hayden, Rathdrum, Post Falls. We spent most of our time on the Coeur d'Alene area. But Dave, to your point, yeah, we can definitely do a separate video and kind of introduce the Hayden Lake area. That's a whole different animal, just like Rathdrum. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Completely different lifestyles and just a short distance. Yeah, so this we talked, I'll just end with this. Um, we talked mostly about kind of, you know, all the fun things downtown and living, mm -hmm. you know, on this little 0.08 acre lot <laughs> where you can walk to everything and it's all convenient but um i mean one of you guys can you talk a little bit about what's going on up in here with the you know living on acreage and sure yeah there's uh, uh a lot of building going on around here because we have a lot of people moving here you know um so lots of different communities are getting developed as well and since uh, a big portion of our business is working with investors. It just has to do with, you know, what you're looking to do, right? Um, there's older homes in the area that you can buy and flip and it's extremely profitable. 
um, if that's what you wanted to do with a real estate purchase in the area. Um, you want to have acreage, you can get acreage. Uh, you want something that's easy maintenance, you can do it too. And you can pretty much do that in every single one of these cities, really. Um, and they're all going to be made up a little bit differently. Uh, but again, that's the advantage of working with, you know, people that are in the market every day and have boots on the ground because we understand the different communities, right? Um, and uh, we couldn't go into all of it right now, but <clears throat> there's uh, some pockets of areas that if you want to be by yourself, you can. Um, you like the, you know, the walkability factor of being right downtown on Santa Beach or, you know, uh, Atlas or Millside and all the stuff we just covered. That's great too. Um, but we have clients that we work with that are full ends of the spectrum all the way as far as you can go. Um, and we're able to satisfy their needs because uh, we know the area pretty well. Well, and I will say the call I get pretty often is uh, from people coming, say, from California or some other metro, you know, market is that sure. they want to be out on acreage, right? Mm -hmm. Like they want to live, if they're moving to Idaho, they want to feel like they live in Idaho, not mm -hmm. uh, in a downtown area. They want woods and um, and a little bit of land. So you've got, there's a whole bunch of development. This whole area, like all of this is really being developed. So you've got a whole bunch of opportunities over here in Rathdrum, five acre lots. There's a builder um, and I think you, I kind of scrolled past it pretty quickly, but there's on my reload guide and also on the website, um, there's a list of all the local builders and clickable links to each one. So if you're interested in new construction, there's a ton of that going on. Um, I'm involved in the Parade of Homes and we just that just ended, but uh, you've got a lot of builder activity, um, everything from production homes, you know, on small lots to, uh, you know, five or more acre lots. Um, and I would say the price range, you know, the minimum price range for let's just say a production home uh, on a smaller lot might start in the 400s. You guys feel like that's a safe thing to say? Yeah. Three, maybe maybe three. mid yeah. mid to high threes, but- Yeah, 375 maybe. Yeah. And then all the way up into the million dollar homes, right? So um, over here in Rathdrum, you've got a whole bunch of five acre lots. Um, out on property. Some of them are over Payton, on the same prairie. Thing. Yep. In the prairie, you're going to have flat lands over here, and you know, you're going to, it's going to be more wooded and elevated. Um, same thing over in Hayden. You have some area that's kind of, Hayden, Hayden is its own animal, um, but you've got the Hayden Lake Country Club. You know, this is a little more off the beaten path, it's not as touristy as Coeur d'Alene. Uh, but you still have communities, neighborhoods, you're on, you're near or on the water. Um, and, but then you still have, you know, homes out on a little bit of more property, but I will say the price points here are much higher. Um, this is kind of a more exclusive community. Uh, Dave, what were your stats on the Hayden? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot more affluent. The uh, average uh, per household income is about $200,000 more than in Coeur d'Alene and then even more than some of the other smaller towns as well. Um, and there's a reason for that. Um, you know, Hayden Lake is <clears throat> beautiful for one thing. Um, it's highly sought after. Um, and the way that they've built their community uh, and they're sticking to it is that they really do want to maintain that North Idaho feel. Um, I was at a chamber of commerce meeting the other day and planning and zoning was there and they're saying, well, you know, we don't want to do what they're doing in, in Rathrum. Um, we want people to be able to have some acreage and now they're intentionally building into their planning and zoning for the future of entire communities and developments where it has to be a minimum of five acres and things like this to kind of maintain that feel. And, like Michelle had said, they're their own animal, and they really are. Um, they've had that opinion, or they've been opinionated, or whatever, to be able to create that kind of community that they want, and they're just not going to let go of it. So that's that's kind of nice, and a lot of people 
you know, go to that area for that reason. And, you know, you're still, what, 20, 20 minutes from Coeur d'Alene. I mean, it's not like, you know, you're not way out, you know. There's some pictures of when, if you just Google Hayden, Idaho. So um, it is, it's, it's beautiful. It's definitely um, a little of a slower feel. So um, some people are seeking that and some people that is not for them. So um, I think that's it. Anything cool. you guys want to add? Anything we didn't touch on? Uh, no, I think that was great. Yeah, yeah, that, that covers most of it. I guess the, the last thing you wanted to mention, Michelle, was uh, just a little bit north of here up uh, Bayview. Oh. We just pull out the map a little bit just so they have an idea about kind of our, the market we cover the most. Yeah, so basically, yeah, all the way up to that area um, is heavily sought after. Um, you still kind of feel like you're really close to downtown, right, Coeur d'Alene. Um, and Bayview, you can get to Coeur d'Alene in 45 minutes, uh, even if you're on the back side of it. So you're still close to, to Coeur d'Alene. So um, the reason we kind of, so this is Lake Ponderay, and I, I like to cover the Kootenai County area, which is kind of, Bayview is the top portion of that, and then down mm -hmm. into this kind of, this area. Um, but, you know, I just sold a house up in Sagal because they, the people didn't really find what they wanted here in the Coeur d'Alene area. Uh, so it's not that, you know, we won't venture out into those um, outer regions. And then, of course, this is Sandpoint. But I like to specialize. And so we know, all three of us know this Kootenai County area really well. Jared grew up here. Dave grew up nearby in Spokane, has lived here forever. Um, I've just been a student, you know, coming from out of the area. And now that I'm a realtor, I mean, I'm, we're all at this, I will say, I, I want to mention this, we're all at this full time, which is super important, because you don't want to be calling someone who they have their regular full time job, and then they're getting with you uh, on the weekends or whenever they can get back to you. Um, each one of us pick up our phone. <laughs> we answer emails, we answer texts, you know, you're, you're gonna, our tagline is five star service every step of the way. And, and I don't really, I 100% think that that is exactly what we provide. So anyway, if you've got any questions, um, all of our information is on the website, lakecdarealestate.com. You can um, reach out to any one of us and we would be happy to help you show you around, uh, show you some listings. If you're not quite here yet or uh, don't know when you're coming, just get in touch and we'll um, you know, start to set you up on uh, our MLS portal where you can do some searching around and figure out what makes sense for you. So hopefully that familiarized you with the area. Thanks guys. Yeah, thank you. Thanks Michelle. Thank you Bye Dave. I appreciate you. So um, just get in touch if you've got questions. Thanks. Bye.